tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Good afternoon, Bill Bryant and Barbara Bailey for WKYT. The news continues at 12:30. Two people escaped an early morning house fire thanks to their neighbor. The fire happened on Alta Avenue in Boyle County about four o'clock this morning. A neighbor saw the flames and made sure the people inside made it out safely. WKYT's Mike Linden has more on that for our top story at 12:30. Mike. Just after 4 o'clock this morning, firefighters tell me the house behind me here on Alta Avenue was fully engulfed in flames with two people still inside. But thanks to the help of someone who lived across the street, those people are still alive today. Danville Fire Department officials say a neighbor woke up to the smell of smoke coming from the second floor of a home across the street just after 4 o'clock this morning. They say the man ran to the burning home and yelled to the two people still asleep inside to get out. While the two were able to get out alive just minutes later, the home burned for more than three hours. Danville Fire Marshal Doug Simpson says the actions of the neighbor speak to how people care about each other in Danville. I don't know a whole lot about him other than he did rescue the two occupants or at least initially alerted them and helped them get to safety. Probably if it wasn't for him, the outcome would probably be a lot different. Simpson says the investigation is still ongoing, but wants to remind you to check your smoke detectors regularly, and if they're older than 10 years, to replace them. In Boyle County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Mike, thank you. And fire officials say the second floor of the home is destroyed. The first floor has some severe water damage. We have a chance for a shower or two this afternoon, but there is some very nice weather on the way. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is here with an early check of the forecast. Micah. Well, we do have a couple of showers already down toward the southeast, and those are trying to move over the mountainous areas, and it's just going to take some time. That's going to be really hard, especially when you get those winds coming in from the north and northwest, which they are right now. Uh, but what you're going to see is a couple of these spark up, just kind of pop up here and there. They don't take long to get on through, and they won't really drop that much rain. Could you have a heavy downpour? Yeah, it's possible, but it doesn't last long. Don't look for any flooding out of this. Small chance as we get into the rest of the afternoon. For the central northern zones, you have a chance too, but it's very slight. You could have a passing shower. That's about it. Temperatures are there in the 70s. A couple of 80s down south where you have seen some sunshine here and there. Clouds are starting to kind of break up just a bit. And the early fall temperatures, that's what we're going to be focusing in on as we slide into the next couple of days because average high right now is mid 80s. We won't be anywhere near that as we slide to tomorrow. We'll actually be in the upper 70s. That feels like September. And I'll show you that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Micah, thank you. A shooting has claimed the life of a 12 year old girl. It happened at a home on 28th Street in Catlettsburg. Investigators say Haley Marshall was helping her family move into the home when a shotgun somehow discharged. Marshall was hit and killed. Her grandfather says the gun may have gotten caught on a strap while Marshall and her brother unloaded a truck. It's an accident. They just started to take a gun out of the truck and it went off and said, he hooked on the seat or something is what they're saying. Now the Boyd County coroner says there is nothing suspicious about Marshall's death and he doesn't think that drugs or alcohol were involved. We're continuing to wait for some details about how the Centerpoint project will be moving forward. Last week, the city said developers had reached an agreement in principle with a third party to move forward with the development in downtown Lexington. Since that announcement, there has been no information on the new developer, their role, or the role of the web companies going forward. We asked Mayor Jim Gray about the agreement today, but he didn't reveal much. I hope we'll be able to share more information shortly. Um, it, the, we all know that the, this project is on uh, everybody's lens of attention, and uh, so, the, and that's a good thing because that shows that people care about their city. Now we have a call in to Dudley Webb to see if he can give us any new details. So far, we have not heard back. A water main break created a big mess on a busy Lexington Road early today. Stone Road near Pasadena Drive is closed because of the break, or it has been during a part of the day today. Water from the main went to flying about 30 feet into the air, and a woman who lives in the area says she thought that she was hearing it raining until she went outside. It looks like um, a glacier or something. I don't know. It's just like a tremendous amount of water coming out of the ground. And it's hitting the power line. 
People who live near the break have no water right now. Kentucky American Water is trying to figure out where the main broke so they can fix it and restore the service. Two women are in jail accused of committing a robbery in front of several children. Police say Jessica Thompson stole cash from a man on Horseman Lane before jumping into a car with Kenetha Fry. Police say the car sped off, hitting the victim and throwing him up onto the car. Police later arrested the two at Fifth and Jefferson. They also found those three juveniles in the car. A grand jury has indicted the police chief in Carrollton along with one of his officers. Chief Michael Wilhoyd and another officer are charged with complicity to commit kidnapping, custodial interference, and official misconduct. Investigators say the two men unlawfully restrained a mentally disabled inmate, took him to Louisville, and put him on a bus to Florida. Investigators say a judge had ordered that the inmate be taken to Eastern State Hospital. A new Reuters poll has Donald Trump leading the field in the run for the Republican nomination. He was back making the rounds on the morning shows today while his competitors are fighting for the same kind of attention. Craig Boswell is in Washington now with the latest from the presidential campaign trail. Donald Trump and Fox News appear to have resolved their differences. Glad you're back with us and glad we're friends again. Well, we are friends, Steve. We've always been friends, and uh, it's great to be back with you. The billionaire made no mention of his clash with the network's host, Megyn Kelly, who lobbed tough questions at Trump during the GOP's first debate. Trump remains the top seed in the Republican lineup, according to a new Reuters poll, with twice as many supporters as his closest competitor, Jeb Bush. The former Florida governor has announced he will step up his criticism of Hillary Clinton in a foreign policy speech at the Reagan Library tonight. He'll argue that the Democratic frontrunner shares some of the responsibility that led to the rise of the Islamic State. Jeb Bush plans to tie the strength of the Sunni militant group to the departure of U.S. forces in Iraq in 2011. It was his brother George who authorized the departure, but Jeb will argue President Obama and Hillary Clinton could have stopped it. Campaigning in New Hampshire, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton singled out Florida Senator Marco Rubio. When one of their major candidates, a much younger man, the senator from Florida, says there should be no exceptions for rape and incest, that is as offensive and as troubling a comment as you can hear. And today on CBS This Morning, Ben Carson waded into the abortion debate. I am totally opposed to killing babies. The neurosurgeon has gained ground after his closing statement in last week's debate. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. In a new poll just out from Suffolk University, Trump is leading the Republican field among Iowa voters with Governor of uh, Wisconsin Scott Walker in second place there. Of course, they do caucuses in that state, uh, so it'll be uh, interesting to see. Health experts are expressing concern about a common risk factor for depressed teens. And there may be a simple, inexpensive way to treat a common, serious medical condition. Ebony Williams has details in this Better Living report. Steroid therapy may be the key to treating pneumonia. A study in the Annals of Internal Medicine found patients who received steroids were discharged from the hospital one day sooner. Researchers say the treatment also reduced the need for breathing tubes and lowered the risk of patients getting a life-threatening complication called acute respiratory distress syndrome. Health experts are urging doctors to start monitoring depressed teenagers for heart disease. The statement published in the American Heart Association's journal, Circulation, is based on a group of recent studies, including one that found that a history of depression was the number one risk factor for heart disease death in women under 30. And a new study finds wide variations when it comes to hospital cleaning practices. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania say more studies need to be done to determine the best methods for cleaning hospital rooms to prevent infections. That's a look at some of the day's top health stories. Ebony Williams, CBS News, New York. And we hope you'll keep it here on WKYT. There's much more coming up. You can browse some unique pieces of art while taking in some beautiful scenery. We'll tell you what you can expect if you head out to the Natural Bridge Artisan Festival. Also, a night of fun and fellowship as girls head back to school. How you can be a part of College Girls Night Out.